This video is about making molds with RTV rubber. In order to make a mold you need an original model. In this case the model is being created with CAD software and will be 3D printed. One thing you don't want with your model is undercuts such as the hollow part in the middle. So this part will be split in two like this leaving no undercuts. This has two advantages. One is that the part can be 3D printed without support and the other is that there will be no undercuts in the part that would make it impossible to separate the model from the mold after the mold has been cast. I could make the mold from the 3D printed parts but because many parts will be made from the mold it's worth taking some extra time to make the models look nice. I'm using auto body filler to fill in all the little ridges from 3D printing. Once this is hardened it will be sanded with several different grits of sandpaper going from coarse to fine. Once the parts are sanded, I'll apply several coats of sandable primer paint. The sandable primer has a lot of filler in it, so it builds up a thick layer. And again, I'm sanding between coats and after the final coat I sand with progressively finer and finer sandpaper winding up with 400 and then 800 grit wet or dry sandpaper. This you should always use wet. If you use it dry it will load up quickly and you'll spend a fortune on sandpaper but using it wet prevents it from loading up so much. By the time you're finished sanding the part with the 800 grit sandpaper, it'll have a glossy finish to it. I can improve the gloss by putting a coat of paste wax on the parts. This is just like waxing your car. And once the wax is dry, you buff it off and it should leave a high gloss on the part. This glossy surface will let me see any imperfections left in the paint. This looks pretty good but in other places I found some little scratches and stuff that I hadn't sanded through. So I've put several coats of another color of sandable primer on it this lets me see when I'm starting to sand through the outer new paint and into the previous layers of paint. Once again I think that I've sanded enough to get the part smooth and the paste wax is the final layer of abrasive. You can actually see it removing some of the red paint here. After the paste wax, the parts are all nice and shiny and smooth. When I make a mold, the mold will reproduce this very smooth surface and the cast parts will look much nicer than if I had just made the mold from the 3D printed models. Here I'm making a mold box out of Lego blocks. They work nice for this application because they can be taken apart and reused and can be reconfigured to make any size mold box necessary. The rubber, the clay snakes will be used to form a gasket below the mold box, sealing the mold box to this aluminum plate. I'm coating the bottom of the part with beeswax to adhere it to the aluminum plate. 
If you have no other source of beeswax, the gaskets that they use for sealing a toilet to the floor is made out of beeswax or a similar material which can be used. Here I'm making the gasket out of clay and sticking the mold box to the aluminum plate. I cut this little piece out of the end of a disposable funnel and it is going to form the channel where resin can be poured into the mold after the mold is formed. This is the RTV rubber that I use. It's made by Aeromarine Products and they sell it on eBay. It's easy to use. Um, it's a one-to-one -one mix by volume so I don't have to weigh it. I use these little cups to make it easier for me to measure out equal volumes of part A and part B of the mold rubber. Once the rubber is measured I pour it into a slightly larger cup to begin mixing. This is the first of two cups that I'll mix the rubber in. I spent a little bit of time scraping the measuring cups because the rubber is kind of expensive and I don't want to waste any. Now that I've started mixing I'm going to transfer the mold rubber to a second container and continue mixing. This prevents any unmixed rubber which would ad was adhering to the sides of the first cup from going into the mold and, and not hardening which would create imperfections in the mold that transfer to every part that you make. The part is not, the mold rubber is now in vacuum and the bubbles are any air bubbles that I accidentally mixed into the rubber. Using the vacuum to degas the liquid rubber prevents these small bubbles from adhering to the part and again making an imperfection in the mold which would be transferred to every part made from it. Now I'm pouring the liquid rubber into the mold with my model in it and I'm trying as best I can to take care to allow no air bubbles to stick to the part. One good way to do that is to start pouring at one corner of the mold and let the rubber flow into the holes and over the part. Now the rubber is hard and I'm separating the mold and mold box from the aluminum plate. Even though there was some mold release on the aluminum plate, a little bit of the rubber stuck to it anyway. You definitely have to put beeswax or some mold release over the entire plate or it's possible to get a mold stuck on there so hard you can't get it off. Mold rubber makes an excellent adhesive. Here I'm removing the clay gasket that held the mold box to the aluminum plate. I'm going to leave the model in the mold at the moment and I'm cutting these little dents because I'm going to, the next step is to pour the other half of the mold and these dents will form lumps on the other half of the mold that force the two mold halves to come together in exactly the same spot as when the part was cast. I'm now coating any of the mold rubber with a pretty thick layer of Vaseline or petroleum jelly. Any spot of rubber not covered with petroleum jelly is going to stick and it'll become as though it was one block of rubber. 
if you forget to put the Vaseline there, you'll never get the two halves of the mold apart. So I've just finished building up the mold box for the second layer. I've poured it and it's hard so now I can remove the Lego blocks and there will be two halves of the mold here. You can see the parting line between the top and the bottom half of the mold that was done in the two consecutive pours. There's the channel where the resin will be poured in. This part is a little bit more complicated because there is no flat spot where everything can sit flush with the metal plate. This part right here sticks up above the plate and would normally make the kind of undercut that would make it impossible to remove this model from the mold after the mold is cast. So what I'm doing is using a little bit of clay to fill in underneath and where the clay meets the part at the top this is going to create a new parting line for the mold. At this side of the mold, the parting line will be at the top of that round thing. Here you can see the first half of the mold has been cast and the hollow by the donut right there is left, was created by the modeling clay. Once again, I'm using petroleum jelly to put a release layer between the bottom mold and the top mold that I'm about to cast. I've mixed the rubber and I put it in vacuum. Any bubbles that I mixed into the rubber as before will expand, float to the top and break and you can see the rubber fall right now as the bubbles break. There's still a little bit of bubbling because the liquid rubber is actually boiling in the vacuum. Now I've poured the, the other half of the mold and you can see how the two halves separate and the lumps and dents on either side line up. I cut blocks of wood if I can get them oriented right to prevent distortion of the mold when I tape the two halves together. I use electrical tape because it's a little bit stretchy and I try to stretch it when I wrap the mold and this way the two wooden blocks are pressing down on either half. Here's a funnel which matches the end of the funnel that got cast into the mold which is where the resin is going to be poured in. Here I'm mixing equal halves of resin which again is a one-to-one -one mix. I get this from Reynolds Advanced Materials and this is called Onyx Resin. They have slow and fast and if you're just starting out get the slow because the fast is a real race. Now I've poured the resin into the funnel and I'm putting it in vacuum. As soon as I turned the vacuum on you saw a couple of bubbles come out. The vacuum causes any air in the mold to expand and bubble out through the resin in the funnel leaving nothing but vacuum and resin to go in the mold now. At this point the resin is starting to boil so I allow the air back into the chamber and the atmosphere since the mold is in vac was evacuated the atmosphere forces the resin 
from the funnel into the mold, filling all the empty space in the mold. Now if I'm really fast, I can shove a Q-tip through the funnel and clear the spout so that I can reuse these funnels eight or ten times before they get so loaded up with hardened resin that I need to throw them away and get use another one. After the resin is hardened in the mold, I take off the electrical tape and when I separate the two halves of the mold there should be a perfectly formed part inside. Notice how the glossy surface of the original has been captured by the mold and transferred to the cast part. These are the parts that I cast in this project. It makes a bracket for holding a focus motor on a camera. Um, if you're familiar with my focus motors, this is an improved bracket that goes on both rods and is less likely to slip. When you're through using your molds, you want to pour each mold filled with resin and leave the hardened resin in the mold. That prevents the mold from distorting under its own weight. And this is the finished part.